Hi, good day everyone. Welcome back to my workshop. Um, today I'm going to do a, a quick video on, on router jigs. So, uh, as I'm building a lot of, of cutting board, and that's the, the, the majority of the projects that I'm doing in my, in my workshop is, is cutting board. Um, I like to put always a deep juice groove on the, on the sides of a cutting board. Let me show you an example. So here's a, um, a cutting board where you can see where you have a groove around. So this gr juice groove um, helps when you cut um, meat, uh, especially after you've, 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 you've cooked it or you, you had a nice braai and your meat comes off the fire and you cut it. All that nice and uh, uh, juiciness that's in there, it's running out on the board. Eventually it will end up on your table or on your worktop, uh, depends on where you are working. So uh, a deep juice groove is always helpful. In my bigger cutting board, like this one, you will see I've put, uh, this is about uh, 16 millimeter uh, juice groove, which I would say it's about uh, 15 to 16 millimeters deep. So this groove really takes up uh, a lot of juices. But you will see it's nice around. Uh, seamlessly so I have two jigs one for my smaller cutting boards and one for my bigger cutting boards that I'm using um, but it's always just left I've, I've got two jigs that I need to store away and I would like to have one jig that I can just adjust to use for for smaller and bigger any size cutting boards um, the jigs that I have for my smaller cutting boards uh, basically limits me to, to one size smaller cutting board and uh, two or three sizes on the on the bigger cutting board so I would like something that is adjustable, uh, easy to adjust as well. And um, also for between the bigger and the smaller cutting boards, the distance that you want your groove from the edge differs. So you'll see on this cutting board, it's quite close to the edge. This is quite heavy. And on this cutting board, it's a bit further uh, from the edge. So this is the jig that I'm uh, currently using for my um, um, smaller cutting boards. So you will see you have your guides on the center so this will distance your board um, from the sides so um, if you make this wider or narrower that will determine how far your juice groove will be from the side so if i want to adjust this board a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller i have to remove all these screws and put my board in align them against against the board and uh, tighten them but uh, the, the, the press foot at the back i've replaced this a few times and uh, the screws are getting stripped and some of the screws are too long they're coming out on the back side of the board so it's working very well but it's it's not very quick to do adjustment if you have a different cutting board different size cutting board so yeah this is the one that i will be replacing i've got a similar one it's about twice the size for my bigger cutting boards so uh, the one that i'll be building now will replace both of those so the components that you see there on my table saw is what I will be using for this project. So on the left hand side, there's two poplar um, pieces of wood. On the right hand side, it's a piece of Rhodesian teak. So the poplar I will use for the base of the jig. You can also use uh, MDF. I, I do not have MDF at, at, at the moment. So I decided to go with uh, the poplar. I had that in stock. And the Rhodesian teak for the fences, it's a very hard wearing wood and I think it will last a long time against all the, the movement and the rubbing of the router against the fence. Then also there is an assortment of bolts and nuts and wing nuts and the two T-tracks that I will be using. So to get a perfect uh, um, joint between two pieces of wood, it's a good idea if you mark them out, like I've done here. 
and you fold them over back to back like this and you put them together like this uh, through your planer you will always have a perfect um, um, joint no matter if you off with one or two degrees as long as both boards are running through the planer together um, you will have a perfect joint <laughs> So when you're working with Rhodesian teak, always wear your dust mask. Um, actually, you need to wear this all the time when, you, when you're making some dust. So, uh, but especially with Rhodesian teak, as, as, as the wood is, um, I wouldn't say high, but it's, it's in the medium range of, of, of wood toxicity. Um, if you look at uh, the database uh, on the toxicity of different woods, it's fairly low. But in my case, it causes uh, some sores in my nose and in my sinuses. So yeah, um, be careful, always use a dust mask when using Rhodesian teak. It's only the dust, the wood itself, uh, when it's finished, you can make a cutting board out of it, you can, um, you can touch the wood, you can make chairs, you can make plates out of it, there's no issue. But if you inhale the dust, that's when the problem comes in. So for the fence assembly, so there's four fences on, um, on the jig table. So it's a bottom left, right and a top. So uh, if I can shoot you on this illustration. So I need to cut a small rabbit there into, into one of the fence components. So I'm going to do um, that by using my router. Just going to use a straight trim bit like this. And then I'm going to set up my fence and then I'm going to cut the groove um, through the length. So I think I will have to do it in two passes. This wood is uh, 21 millimeter thick, uh, 22 millimeter thick in that region. So I've got all the slots now, they are done. And now I need to drill these holes for the adjustment screws that need to go in there. So I want to drill that holes and then I am can start gluing. And perhaps uh, before we go to that, um, one thing that I realized is to cut this slot on the side of, of the bottom part is my router bit is a little bit too short to cut through um, this 22 millimeter stick wood. So what I'm thinking is I'm actually going to cut it off here on the table saw. Then I'm going to remove a piece of wood. And then I'm going to glue this edge back, but I'm going to use two dowels on this side and two dowels on that side to glue it back on. So perhaps some of you guys at home also do not have a router table where you can cut uh, these type of grooves. You can always use a table saw also to cut these slots. It will take a little bit longer or a dado set in a table saw. And uh, so I'm going to do this on the, um, on the table saw and add two dowels on the side. That's the way I'm going to go. So I'm going to drill the holes now for the adjustment screws, but unfortunately I do not have an M10 tap. So I'm going to make a plan. Um, you just take a high tensile M10 um, bolt. You grind a few slots on the threads, clean them with a small needle file. And this works perfectly in a, a hard or soft wood as a replacement for a tap.
so the drill that I used is a 8.5 millimeter drill and then I used that bolt that I've grinded to tap and look at that beautiful thread this bolt goes in very easy it's also very strong and uh, in hardwoods like a Rhodesian tick the chances that that thread will strip is, is very slim so I've cut all the components I'm gonna glue them together I'm going to use two uh, 10 mm dowel sticks as a spacer. So all the components are dry, um, I've left them overnight to dry, they came out quite nicely. So this is what I meant about instead of cutting the slot on my router table with the fence, I just remove a piece of lumber on my table saw and I've added two dowels with a 9mm spacer in between to get me the correct height and uh, I've glued two dowels in. So now I'm going to cut them straight, do some final sanding and then we're going to start with uh, the cutting to add all the T-slots in the um, in the base so I'm gonna use my new uh, flat trim saw to remove the dowel sticks So all the slots are cut, it's time to cut the T-tracks and add them into the grooves and uh, I'm gonna cut this using my mitre saw So all the rails has been mounted into the base plate 
all the components uh, just need us a little bit of a final sanding but before I do that I'm just going to do a quick assembly to see how everything comes together um, the left hand side fence this one is going to be a static fence it cannot move so yeah this one is going to be screwed down permanently and these others are going to slide on the on the t-slot so uh, I'm going to put that together So the jig is basically completed, all that's left to do is to put some uh, finish on that. I think I'm going to just finish it uh, with some Danish oil. It's the quickest and the easiest. Um, let me perhaps just show you how it works. So this is the minimum size that you can cut. That's uh, 230 by about 115 millimeters. So that's the smallest size that you can cut, then you can just loosen all the screws, you can adjust it out. And you can adjust it to basically any size that you, that you need. So the maximum size that you will be able to cut on this will be a length of 600 and the width of 360 millimeters and then uh, you will see I've added these uh, screws in the guide rails so the function of these screws is when you are cutting your juice groove in your cutting board not all your cutting boards groove is the same distance from the edge so if you want to move the groove closer to the edge you will turn adjust these screws out and that will move your workpiece further away from your fence well exactly that's the theory but uh, we can quickly test it let's do a small demonstration This is just a few seconds to adjust, it's very quick. This dust cover is a bit in the way. With uh, cutting bigger boards um, it won't be such a big problem for now I'm just gonna remove it So the groove came up quite nice, very quickly. So this is on a real uh, small cutting board. If you want to cut it a bit closer to the edge, let's uh, perhaps test that.
So let's say um, I want to cut a smaller cutter board now and I want to move this groove closer to the edge. I will adjust the screws, all of them more or less the same. This ruler is a bit too long. So let's say I'm going to adjust all of them more or less to 10 millimeters. So the first fence that you pull down is the top fence, flush against the bottom one, then you tighten it, then you take the right hand side fence, and the bottom fence. I'm just going to rub a few coats of uh, Danish oil on here. You can't believe how beautiful this poplar is. Always remember when you've used Danish oil or linseed oil, when you want to um, store away your rag, just take a plastic bottle. Put it on the inside and close it so that it's airtight. If you throw this rack in the dustbin, the chances is very high, 100% basically, that it will um, catch fire. It's got, um, spontaneous combustion. So yeah, be careful when working with Danish roll. So we've come to the end of this episode. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've tested the jig. Um, it works very well. Um, like these two. Small samples that I did, one quite far away from the sides. This is the distance that I use on my bigger cutting boards. It's about uh, 12 millimeters from the edge. On my smaller cutting boards, I do about uh, 3 to 4 millimeters, perhaps sometimes 5, depends on how big the, um, the router tip, uh, tip is. Adjustment is very quick. Uh, just uh, loosen these wing nuts, adjust it to your size. 
if you want to have a smaller board or you want to adjust the, the, um, the distance that uh, the groove is from the edge, you will need a small ruler and a number 6 Allen key, that's what you will need. Very quick, very easy to adjust. This is the last uh, juice group jig that uh, you will need most probably. I cannot go much wider than um, uh, 300 millimeters as my I've got the Makita thicknesser. The bed only allows for 300 millimeters. And uh, in length, if, if you go longer than 550 or 600 millimeters, your cutting board is starting to get out of proportion. So I've really enjoyed building this uh, jig. Um, it's something that I'm going to use for many years to come. It's always nice to have uh, uh, good uh, quality tools or, or custom made tools that you can use and you know you can be proud of it and uh, all your efforts and, and hard work is in there. I will just uh, definitely use this uh, uh, jig in the future. I've got a few cutting balls this week that I need to finish for a few clients and uh, all of them are different sizes. So yeah, definitely that's actually what um, triggered the idea to, to, to get my jig done as soon as possible. So yeah, I will be glad to share the plans with you if you're interested. Leave your email address below or contact me. I will leave my um, uh, email address also in the description. So yeah, if you're interested in the plans, contact me and I will gladly share them with you. So yeah, once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. God bless. Bye-bye.